uh, our well known but not oft appearing friend Aeon slash Taji. <laughs> also, I'm Batman. No, you're not. It's moment time. Preceratops. Nice. Also, I apologize right now for any noise you may hear. It is currently 10 p.m. over here on the west coast of the United States of America on the 4th of July. Do the math. <laughs> oh, and don't be supposed to be here rattling and whatnot from the wind outside at my place. Going through it's a tornado. Old, old place. No, just the wind rattles the old sh blinds and whatnot on the outside. The old sh shutters, shutters yeah. yeah. Yeah, also, yeah. for those who've been watching our content, you may notice, since you haven't seen a good old Aeon in a while, you might notice he's missing something. A lot of something. Not that. The other side. There you go. That, yeah. He, he's missing a lot of hair. Anyway. Yeah, I lost so, about half <laughs> kilo to do it. Anyway, we're here to take a look today at the DC uh, and uh, Boom Studios comic crossover Justice League Power Rangers. Right there. Hardback edition. Yeah, this is the hard one. From your local library. Yes, I got it from the library, but it is available wherever fine comic books are sold. Definitely check that out. Uh, written by Tom Taylor and Stephen, uh, Stephen Byrne. It is a, uh, a fun little story that uh, serves as basically a crossover between the Power Rangers and the Justice League. And it's received criticism from both sides, interestingly. Uh, it, I First, I'll start by saying it is an enjoyable story, in my opinion. Uh, I have read it. These two have not. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of here to react and talk about it. Uh, I think it, it is very... read it to me, so I, I think I, I know enough. Yeah, um, it is very enjoyable, but there are some concerns about the fact that, number one... Um, there are definitely some concerns on the DC side that the Justice League is made to appear underpowered so that the Power Rangers appear to be at the same level as them, which is certainly valid. And also some concern about, uh, of course, whether uh, and the Power Rangers side of whether it fits into continuity anywhere, which it really doesn't. <laughs> it's an elsewhere story. Something like that. Uh, the basic premise of the story is that the... Um, it kicks off at a point where it's already happened, and then flashes back to show you how it happened. But effectively, the Power Rangers were in Angel Grove. Um, the original six, including Tommy as Green, are in Angel Grove, and they end up in they end up in a situation where uh, Zordon summons them to the command center and explains that uh, Alpha Five has gone missing. Um, he left the command center to do a perimeter check, and Zordon hasn't seen him since, and he's getting a little worried. So the Rangers try to go out to find Alpha, and uh, Zack does. Zack finds Alpha and uh, teleports him back into the command center, uh, only to um, you know, for the revelation that the Alpha he found was actually a fake and planted with a bomb. Oh, man! So the bomb goes off in a massive explosion, uh, <laughs> Basically destroying the command center and allowing uh, a bunch of Z putties and Lord Zed to come in. Typical. And so, it, and so Zach, blaming himself for falling for the fake Alpha, proceeds to morph and uh, fights off some of the putties, but ends up man managing to grab Lord Zed long enough to teleport both of them out of the command center. Unfortunately, because the teleportation system was damaged in the explosion, instead of just teleporting them out of the command center, it teleports them to another dimension. Oh, boy. Uh, the other rangers show up back at the command center and fight off the z putties uh, as Zordon, who managed to stay functional despite the explosion, uh, explains what happened. Zack, on the other hand... Uh, along with a couple of putties that he was fighting at the time, uh, finds himself in Gotham City. Uh, he runs into Batman almost immediately, and, uh, of course, not knowing exactly who or what he is, starts fighting Batman. Oh, boy. Uh, you know, mind you... 
Now, mind you, Zack, Batman asks Zack very calmly to put down his weapon, and Zack, mistaking him for one of Zed's monsters, attacks him. You know, Batman, Batman manages to fight him off and disarm him, but the rest of the Rangers teleport through to help. You know, Batman, despite being Batman, gets overwhelmed due to the fact that the Rangers have enhanced, uh, or at least as, as, it, as it's explained here, um, you know, increased durability, increased speed, and increased strength. And Batman, in a, in a part that someone argues uncharacteristic, calls it Justice League for backup. <laughs> So after doing so, the remainder of the League show up, and the whole thing turns into a full-on fight between the Rangers and the League. And uh, I guess the, telep the teleportation system works enough that the Rangers are actually able to summon the Dinosaurs, which is one of the main reasons this doesn't fit in a continuity, because if Lord Zed's there fighting, the Dinosaurs shouldn't exist. Oh! Yeah. He kind of blew Unless those up. At Dino Thunderzords, but... Even then, that's kind of... They should be Thunderzors at that point. Yeah. But one could argue, given the fact that the Thunderzords basically use the Dinozords as the base, as you clearly see, they summon the Dinozords, which get struck by lightning and turn into Thunderzords. One could argue that the power, the morphing grid, should be able to just not hit them with thunder, and the Dinozords should be fully operational. Because they're obviously operational um. before hit with thunder, because they're moving on the ground. Or actually running, like the Tyrannosaurus is actually running, and then it hit with lightning and turns into the Red Dragon. So, by Power Rangers' his own lofty canon, basically continuity, by by what is shown in the show, as a uh, as Emperor Palpatine would say, he was fine. Uh, dinosaurs are quite operational. Yeah. And and basically, they, the, the, basically the fight that escalates uh, to the to the dinosaurs and they all begin fighting each other. Uh, specifically, the pterodactyl comes out first, but uh, eventually the rest of the you know Fl Flash and uh, and Cyborg showed up first, and uh, John Stewart Green Lantern is here. <clears throat> but and then the rest of the dinosaurs eventually come out, Dragon Zord included. And uh, so the whole thing turns it from a from a, a a Zord fight into a uh, you know Zords against League fight until finally they managed uh, they managed to to shut the whole fight down with uh, Flash Flash uh, vibrates himself through the T Rex pulls Jason out and is about to really hurt him when Superman stops and was like no 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 stop stop stop. And uh, we find out through a, a cutaway over to the pterodactyl that uh, basically Wonder Woman, uh, it, it, Superman had been at the pterodactyl before, and he must have helped Wonder Woman get in. And then basically Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman lassoed Kimberly and made Kimberly explain what the hell was going on. Oh, uh, boy. Of course. So um, once they explain what the hell is going on, everybody calms down and talks to each other for a few minutes. And, uh, you know, the League's about like, all right, we guys from another universe, you know, we should uh, we should get you back to your universe. And Zach's like, well, we can't do that because I kind of came here with a bad guy. His name is Lord Zed. He has powerful magic. He's kind of a threat. We need to shut him down before we leave or you guys are going to have a problem. And so they're, try they're trying to figure out exactly, uh, you know, Lord Zed got lost when he teleported in and we see Zed floating in space. Being an alien overlord, he doesn't need to breathe, so that doesn't really affect him. Um, uh, when we see Zed manage to, um, we see Zed get beamed aboard some kind of alien ship, and we find out that uh, that Zed has been captured by Brainiac, and so uh, Zed Zed proceeds to strike a deal with Brainiac. Brainiac explaining he seeks knowledge above all else. And Zed basically says, you know, there's some people here trying to stop me. You know, how about I team up with you and we destroy both our sets of enemies. And then in addition to gaining knowledge on this world, you're going to gain knowledge from a whole nother dimension. Of course. 
and uh, exp- and explains that basically he'll offer he'll offer to let Brainiac take Angel Grove as the city from Earth that he's always desired for his collection. So once they all ha- once they all have a conversation once the back to the heroes they all have a conversation and establish what's going on. But suddenly, um, there are worldwide there are attacks on cities around the world from giant octopus creatures, which are obviously been sent down, which are obviously uh, Zed monsters. Hmm. Ah, yeah. Yeah, there's one on a major city area. So the Ranger the Rangers proceed to team up with the Justice League, and they split up. Basically, pairing off league members with rangers in their zords to go to their respective cities to fight off the monsters. And they also call in a ton of auxiliary league members, all of whom show up basically to say, hey, this person's in the comic, and then do nothing. <laughs> uh, including, but not limi- yeah, including, but not limited to, uh, Black Canary and Green Arrow, um, Aquaman and Mara, uh, that's Shazam. Uh, the Teen Titans are here, Starfire and Beast Boy, or Changeling specifically. Right, because they wanted a six-team and a six-person team to work together. Yeah. That's why they did that. They were like, well, we have to, We should establish the rest of the DC universe, at least some of it, because it wouldn't make sense if there's a threat of this scale that, you know, Batman wouldn't turn around and be like, son, we need your help. <laughs> you know, you kind of run a team, we kind of need your help. <laughs> yeah. You know, or... Yo, Arthur, um, we need you because you're Justice League and shit's going down. Yep. Uh Supergirl, <laughs> Hot Girl, yeah. the uh the, the Jessica Cruz Green Lantern, Batgirl, Wally Wet, the other f- kid flash. Mm-hmm. Well, they all show up in the various cities and they all fight off the bad guys. Uh and the main the main and the, the, the league members use the swords to ride to the locations and then attack. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're Batman. aware Kid Flash is part of the Teen Titans, right? Sometimes. That, is that is that the black one, the black Wally West? Looks like it, yeah. Yeah, he's a member of the Teen Titans. Okay. Well, anyway, that's why he's there. He's where with the team. So we see them all ride out. We see them all. Uh, the league goes out of the Zords, and they all start trying to fight off the creatures. Yeah, he's Superboy's friend, Connell. And uh, the Rangers explain that if these are Zed monsters, really all you got to do is just keep hitting them hard enough because they only take so much damage before they go. Pfft. Or, as we like to say in the DC Universe, Superman, punch everything. Now, well, sort of. But they also, so they all start attacking the, uh, in the varying cities. Superman is with the T-Rex Zord. <clears throat> as he should. But, um... Of course, the monsters are, uh... Well, the monsters are doing damage to the planet. They also served as a distraction as Brainiac drones managed to land on each of the Zords, throw the Rangers out, and then Brainiac control the Zords. I also pointed out, and see if you agree with me here, Tachi. I I pointed out to Jim as he was reading this, when he was going over it before. They missed a huge, two huge opportunities here. They could have gone with either one of them, and it would have been epic. Oh, yeah? Keep in mind, they have all six Rangers. Therefore, they have all six Zords. That could have made the fucking Ultra Zord. No. They don't have so, Titanus. Two locations. One, they went to San Francisco. What is San Francisco most well known for? San Fran. What, the yeah. harbor? Yes, the San Francisco Bay. What is most well known from emerging from a giant bay of water? <laughs> exactly. What doesn't happen in this comic? That. They don't bring out the Dragon Sword. No, they bring Tachi. it out. He's just in one of the other cities. Number two, the, another city they go to. Another huge missed opportunity. Tokyo, Japan. <laughs> yes, what is Tokyo? What is Japan most well known for? Mecha fights. Godzilla. Godzilla. Fights. Godzilla. Yeah. Literally, they could have the Dragon Sword come stomping through Tokyo to defend it, and everyone on the ground po- pointing up, going, Gojira! 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 Yeah, they didn't or do that. Mecha Gojira! Yeah, and they didn't do that. I'm like, you had two cities where he would have made sense to show up, and he goes to neither one of them. I'm like, what are you thinking? Yeah. God damn. Okay, it's Dragon Caesar in Japan, but seriously, Mecha Godzilla. Yeah. 
Honestly, yes, this is, oh God, honestly, honestly, this is, honestly, this is the DC universe. Somebody sees a giant green robot, they're liable to think Luther's piloting it. <laughs> well, based on what happens US. later in the comic, they're not wrong. <laughs> anyway. But we'll get to that. Spoiler, spoilers. So yeah, so they managed to extract the the League manages to extract the Rangers from the Zords, but the Zords are mind controlled and basically become an issue. And once all once the Zords have been controlled, the Zords and the monsters and the drones all disappear. Hold on, I want to show touch this because this looks freaking cool. Let's see. Uh Power Rangers versus Justice League. Brainiac. What, what, what while you're doing that? I want to show him. Oh, actually, I don't have to do that. Jim. Yeah. I'm going to give you orders because you have the comic and it's easier. Okay. Show him the pterodactyl. Tell me that's not badass, Taji. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. They had two opportunities to bring out Dragon Zord and have it fight through a city that yeah. it could have been well known Amazing for. Amazing entrances for it, and they didn't take either one of them. It's like, really? Come on, people. You got one job. Your yeah. one job was to make Tommy look badass, and you failed twice. They did. What, anyway. Did they have, did they have Pterodactyl fly out of Mount St. Helens? No, Pterodactyl just kind of just materialized in the middle of the city. Yeah. That would have been but, cool, though, if, if it flew out of Mount St. Helens. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Well, anyway, so the, so after they control controlled, the Zords, the Brainiac Drones, and the monsters all disappear, and they put two and two together and realize that they must have taken the all the all the armies back to Angel Grove in the other universe, and that they're basically wreaking havoc in that world right now, and there's no Rangers there to stop them. So they try to come up with a plan to figure out how the hell they're going to deal with this. So at this point, don't the didn't they take the Rangers Morphers too? The yes. Rangers are powerless at this yes, point. Yes, when, when the when the, when the yeah yes when the when the drones took over the Zords before the Rangers got rescued, the Brainiac drones took their communicators and Morphers. Thank you for reminding Which, me. Which, in my opinion, doesn't make sense because okay, tell me if this makes any kind of sense in Ranger Sentai lore, Tachi. Hmm. While morphed, the drones reached out, grabbed the buckler, and ripped it off of their morph suit. How does that make any kind of sense whatsoever? Nope. I didn't think so. Well, it happened. Because <laughs> literally, when they took over the um, pterodactyl, the drone literally went inside, grabbed Kimberly, and literally yanked the dino buckler off of her, you know, power suit. Yeah. Pretty much. I was like, um, power suit doesn't work like that? Apparently it does now. I mean, there have been times where they take the coin out of the morpher and they've handed it over to Goldar with... Yeah. And the way, the way the art is drawn, it looked like they ripped the coin specifically, but then the morpher is nowhere to be found. But then I think they have the morpher later when they get it back, so I don't know. But that only works when the sp ranger themselves specifically pull the morpher off. They can do it because they're the ranger. But I don't think anyone that's not the ranger can physically rip the coin or the morpher out of the fucking power suit. Because the power kind of has a field that protects it. It does, but if Brainiac had hacked in and controlled their zords, that means Brainiac had hacked the grid itself. Vengex inferior, Brainiac superior. Pretty much. So anyway. I was going to say, uh, I don't want to reference Overdrive. <laughs> yeah, so I... How about we Overdrive? Always a chance. Alpha went into the morphing grid. Oh yeah, uh. fair enough. <laughs> anyway, so basically they... Uh... They got out of the dimension and got all the shit. And apparently, while everybody, while the league was fighting everywhere on Earth, in addition to stealing the Zords, uh, simultaneously, probably Brainiac himself uh, basically broke into the Watchtower. They used the Watchtower's teleporters to get them back to the other dimension. 
Congratulations, Batman. You handed them a dimensional teleporter. Oh, Cyborg pointed out Brainiac got through our firewalls like they weren't even here. Of course he did. It's Brainiac. It's kind of what he does. Yeah. You've been fighting him how long and you don't expect this. You fail, Justice League. You fail. So they all try to figure out what the hell they're going to do next. And Billy comes up with a plan. Of course. Of course he does. But he said... Uh, Brainiac Billy. Yeah. Well, not Brainiac Billy, but... Well, Billy is a Brainiac, isn't he? Yeah, but he's not Brainiac. You know what I mean. <laughs> anyway. Or is he? Dun, no. dun, dun. Anyway. So uh, Billy asks, the, uh, you know, um, you know, they're, they're trying to figure out how they can get back. Um, yes, this is actually something really cool. That I'm like, I would not have thought of that. That's kind of awesome. Yeah, um, the Flash makes the point that technically he can cross dimensions at will, but it's really hard to do, and he can't take anybody with him. With the cosmic treadmill and shit? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, it depends on the version of the Flash. This is Barry, right? Yeah. I don't think he needs a cosmic treadmill. He can just jump into the Speed Force and pop out the other side. Yeah, he does that, but he can't. He pro it's usually accidental when he does it, and he can't bring people with him, or they'll probably die. Yeah. Wally needs the cosmic treadmill. Yeah, so anyway... Uh, Billy asks if their universe has a large hadron collider. Large hadron, yeah. Yeah. So they take the, so they take the Justice League jet and they fly over to where it is at the CERN facility. Oh boy, this is gonna be right this is gonna be fucking over with physics all over again. Probably. And so of course they uh, they sent Superman in first because Superman and he asks very nicely if they could borrow their hadron collider. Hi, I'm and, Superman. I need that. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, you know they they agree, and uh, he explains that the fate of another world is at stake here. And uh, the league explains that while that seems impossible, they're actually going to have to take the collider and move it somewhere else to do what they need to do, which they all figure out a way to do. Yeah, it's called Superman. Hmm. Uh, you need to move it? Okay, move. Boom! I'm Superman. Where do you want this? Kind of. Although they do need they do need the added benefit of uh, of, of Flash moving under, uh, vibrating underneath to reduce the weight and Lantern adding additional force, but... And Wonder Woman helping lift it. Yeah. But anyway, so they managed to put... They managed to figure out this thing, uh, you know, to figure out a way to do this. Um... And then, and the point is made from a, a Superman dial uh, te uh, thought box, uh, not um, um, narration box. There we go. Basically, explain that Flash is a scientist and the absolute authority of things moving at these speeds. Green Lantern is an architect with a power ring; he can construct anything. Billy is one of the greatest scientific minds of another world. Anything you can think of, Cyborg can instantly calculate and test. Wonder Woman has the wisdom of Athena. Batman is, well, Batman is Batman. Yeah. <laughs> He's not wrong. The scientists make the point that the science doesn't exist, and they explain that we're going to have to make it exist. Well, so Batman did design and construct the watchtower, so he's no slouch in the tech and architectural department either. Um, Technically, no. He funded it, had it constructed, but I don't believe he was the designer. I'm relatively sure that was actually John. John Stewart. Yeah, yeah, John Stewart. But he He's still an designed architect. and built the tech, though. He just went down to Wayne Tech and said, build this, and they built it. Yeah, fair enough. So anywho, so they uh, they figure out they're going to do this. But they explain that they need, in order to do it, they need something uh, with a, a residence of their world. Uh, of the main world in order to know, basically, what frequency they're aiming this thing at to know where to go. And also, Superman is also the son of the greatest scientific mind on an alien planet, so yeah. True. He's no slouch either. He's not an idiot. No. <laughs> but and so, he's minus one. Yeah, and so they figure out they need something that's actually got the, uh, the, the basically the proper, the proper residence connection. And so they figure out that they do, other than themselves, which wouldn't necessarily work, they do have one thing left to serve that purpose, 
And that's that the, the Morphers and coins were taken. Tommy still has the dragon dagger. Yeah, of course. So they just, and he says it's still connected to the dragon's order in our dimension and it can feel the connection. So they're going to use that. Okay, so basically Wonder Woman and Superman are going to lift this thing and Green Lantern is going to uh, hold the thing together so it doesn't get damaged. He's going to protect the bubble it. Yeah, so they lift the thing and they move it where they need to move it, they, which is in space. They take it to space. Of course. I love all the scientists are like, and how are you going to move that thing? And Superman just turns to them, I'm Superman. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> that you do realize who I am. Yeah. <laughs> I can so, move it. So they get the thing into space and they set it up. And then those people who cannot survive in space on their own get inside the javelin plane. And uh, Green Lantern goes out into space with the Dragon Dagger and is able to fire up the portal. And they shoot through and get back to their uh, their home universe. But the barrier is already around Angel Grove and it's already... Phoom, As gone. Brainiac does. So, shoot in Angel Grove. Send in so Ant Man. So that's that's Marvel. I know. You mean the <laughs> Atom? Sure. So anyway, they're like, "Crap! What do we do now?" And they're like, "Well, we're obviously we're gonna have to go find Zeta Brainiac. We're gonna have to fight him. We're gonna have to get Angel Grove back." Yeah, Superman's like, "Your city is there. Let's go get it." Yeah, and they and they, and they make the point that they're gonna need to go. They're gonna need to go fight. With Batman making the point that whenever Brainiac takes a city from a planet, he destroys the remainder of the planet, too. So we're on a timer here. We're on a time crunch, people. Yeah, so they split up into two teams. The idea being that one team is going to go to Brainiac's ship and try to get Angel Grove back. And the other team is going to have to stay on Earth and defend it from Brainiac's forces. And the Rangers make the entirely valid point, um, we don't have powers. Yeah. And Batman says, a oh, Batman! Translates to, I have a plan. Yeah, basically. Because he's apparently DC's Groot now. Yeah. Um. Well, I could see a way that they get their powers back without having to get the Morphers back. But it involves Zordon being a smarmy little arsehole with plans upon plans upon plans. Backups upon backups upon backups. No, Batman's plan is, I'm Batman, therefore, all the shit that, you know people i've beaten up have dropped i own here it's yours now yeah batman basically oh, explains batman. that he, batman basically explains he lo he loaded up the javelin's armory with stock from the watchtower trophy room before they left uh, show him the gross. image jim the big big fuck off image which big fuck off image the one of them all assembled with their shit standing as a group that's not a big fuck off image but no oh, okay but yeah, the summation is basically they all they all get known DC weapons and armor and shit. Um, a variety of things. Jason gets the Sword of Azrael. Um, Zack gets the Atomic Axe. Uh, Kimberly is given one of Green Arrow's bows. And a boxing glove arrow. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Um, they get some varying, some varying masks and shit. And Tommy gets the coolest thing of all. Yeah, Tommy gets a full because he is green. Tommy gets a full set of Lex Luthor armor. What? Show him the image. I'm trying not to get us copyright struck here. We're not going to get copyright struck for images. There you go. And yes, that know. is Jason standing behind him in the red hood outfit with Sword of Azrael. Fair enough. Also, Jim, you know how I mentioned before I didn't understand how Batman had the Sword of Azrael. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, now I've done research because my RPG. Now I know how he has it. Because that sword, that is John, that is uh, John Paul Valley's sword. At this point, uh, John Paul Valley is dead. Uh, Michael Lane is Asriel. He's got different swords. So that sword, known as the Sword of Asriel, is just a giant flaming sword. And that particular design is Valley's sword. So I'm guessing Batman picked it up when he went to go find Valley's body and couldn't find it. And the sword was probably sitting there. Yeah, so they basically get some different armor. Um, Kimberly ends up with some of Hawk with Hawk Girl's helmet and some of her armor. Uh, Billy ends up with some stuff from Prometheus and a, a not a trident exactly, but some kind of thing that's not altogether different. I think Jason ends up wearing what looks like a uh, a red hood mask. It's probably a gift from Aquaman. 
Mm, no, it doesn't look like that, Troy. And, and then Zach ends up in a costume that's uh, a, a Domino has reminiscent a little bit of Batwing. Well, it's not his trident. He's not going to let some ruddy little teenage punk kid human wield the trident up a side. And that's dumb. Yeah. And uh, Trini, because we still have to be racist, gets dressed up as Katana. That's incredibly racist, considering different fucking race. Yeah, I know. Ay, 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 ay. So anyway, they split up into two teams, as mentioned. Uh, Superman flies into space and starts attacking Brainiac's ship to act as a distraction. Meanwhile, Cyborg, Trini, Billy, and Batman uh, go to break, proceed to break into Brainiac's ship. Sorry, Zack, Trini, Billy, Batman, and Cyborg. There we go. And they start fighting through the ship and trying to get the stuff. Uh, Superman comes in and helps and manages to uh, manages to get a hold of the communicators and the morphers and the power coins and give them back to the Rangers. Morpha time. Well, that's how it starts, but in the middle of the it's Morpha time, Zack gets shot in the chest because Brainiac took over Cyborg. Oh, for the love of Christ. Yeah, because Batman was stupid enough to bring the robot into Brainiac's ship. Yeah, so they deal with that. Uh, <clears throat> Billy Billy manages to morph and ram ram a f freaking power lance through Cyborg's stomach. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the meeting of at the meeting of the NATO headquarters and in, in Brussels down there, the Wonder Woman proceeds to walk in there and uh, bring in the the remaining Rangers, Jason. Uh, uh, Jason, Kimberly, and Tommy in their psycho suits, and basically explain, look, I know you don't know me, my home doesn't exist in your world, but these, there are different causes right now, but these are the Power Rangers, there's some shit going down, and we kind of need your help. And so, you know, basically, um, Zed begins Earth's destruction, summons a bunch of monsters, uh, more fighting in space, Green Lanterns in space starts fighting off Brainiac drones, Cyborg gets shut down, but they manage to uh, they manage to reboot him. Batman manages to go and reboot Cyborg because he's Batman. Yeah, and uh, per yeah, basically purge Brainiac. So they go to try to get off the ship. They end up finding the Bottle City of Angel Grove. And then there's a inter very interesting portion of this, um, <clears throat> because we find we find out that um, you know, uh, Cyborg also mentions that when he was connected to Brainiac ships, somebody else called, and we find out that the real Alpha is on board, and that Brainiac has a very interesting conversation with her about Alpha being that you are an artificial life form. Why is it that you choose to serve an ally with humans? They're clearly inferior to you. At the real Alpha. And, yeah, and basically Alpha has a, basically berates Brainiac for uh, being selfish for you know his pursuit of knowledge, but uh, you know basically basically you're saying that Brainiac is uh, Brainiac with his usual uh, his usual mo def basically defies a general definition of sentience by not uh, you know because he only thinks of himself. He doesn't consider what goes on when he takes all this knowledge. So, um, back on the planet, all hell breaks loose, more fighting. Uh, Superman tells everybody else to get the hell off the ship. He'll go take care of, fight Brainiac and rescue Alpha. Uh, he, he does arrive there. He ends up fighting Brainiac. Brainiac pulls out a chunk of kryptonite that he had stored. Of course. He's like Batman. He always has kryptonite on hand. Yep, uh, Brainiac takes a sword to the back, takes a katana sword to the back of the chest because the Rangers came back to help. They managed to take Brainiac out. Not the Soul Taker for those keeping score at home. No, no, it's not. Um, <clears throat> Batman grabs a hold of that piece of kryptonite and just covertly slips it in his utility belt for later. I'm Batman. 
and they proceed to get everybody the hell off the ship. More funny down on the planet. Uh, they give the other rangers back their coins. Then they get Alpha with them. Then they find Alpha and take yep, him with them. They get Alpha and they bring Alpha back down to the planet. Lord Zed shows up. More fighting. Ay yeah 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 rangers. Yep. Um, Lord Zed, Lord Zed, Lord Zed grabs one of his monster grow bomb things. Oh, of course. Throws it at the monster, but Flash runs between and catches it. <laughs> he gives it to Alpha. He says, here, Alpha, hold on to this for me. And so, uh, one of the Brainiac <laughs> drones demands that Alpha hand it over, and he refuses. And so, Alpha, for what may be one of the few, if not the only time in his life, gets pissed off. Basically says, you've threatened my friends, you've threatened their home, and you've taken their families. I'm not really going to stand for that. And he uses the bomb on himself. He says, you have no choice. He's like, no, I have a choice. And uh, that happens. Yeah, he grows himself to be giant. And punches a giant worm monster in the throat. Ooh! I choose to fight for something larger than myself. And he starts fighting giant monsters, screaming, ay, yi yeah, yeah. Uh, pow, pow, pow. Yeah, more, more uh, giant alpha beats up monsters. <coughs> yeah. One of the monsters almost lands on the rangers, but Superman and Wonder Woman catch it, and alpha apologizes. You know, he's like, I'm sorry, you could have been crushed. It's okay, alpha. It's your first time punching a leviathan. We've all been there. <laughs> So they get the so they get the city back, and Flash makes the point as he shows it to he shows it to Jason. Jason makes the point that the command center and Zordon aren't in there. So where the hell are they? <laughs> and we see that uh, the command center itself, with Zordon and Clothes, were shrunk down separately, and is currently inside a tiny a ti currently inside a tiny little uh, jewel on a necklace around Lord Zed's neck. So Zords, so Zed summons the Brainiac Zords and begins attacking. Uh, meanwhile, meanwhile, Billy and Cyborg are working together, trying to hack control of the Zords back. Do the Rangers have their powers back at this point? Yes. Because yeah, you failed to mention that you know they actually gave them all the morphers and shit back. No, I did. I mentioned that the ones on the station will remorph before they went in to save Alpha, and that the rest got their coins back when they got back to Earth. Ah, okay, I missed that part. Baka. Morph of time. Q theme. So Cyborg gets retaken over by Brainiac. And uh, Billy and <clears throat> Billy basically says, you know, you think you're so smart, Brainiac, but you know, we act, you know, we studied that we studied your arm that we took with us because they took one of his arms when they were fighting him before on the ship. So we studied your arm. And it was a surprise. And Brainiac's like, you cannot surprise me. I can see every eventuality. I'm a twelfth level intelligence. Uh -huh. and, Bill and Billy's like, I don't know what a twelfth level intelligence is, and I kind of suspect you made it up, but I bet this will still come as a bit of a shock, Brainiac, and. Basically reveals that he built he built a Trojan into Cyborg, mm -hmm. and the virus basically affects Brainiac and shuts him down. <laughs> also, simultaneously freeing the Zords. So Zed gets pissed off and grabs two of his own bombs and makes himself grow. Uh, everybody starts attacking Lord Zed, but uh, he blasts the entire Justice League with magic, which pretty much shuts them all down. <clears throat> Batman just barely managing to save Clark before he got the tip of Zed's staff just, you know, rammed right through him. And uh, Batman runs to Clark to try to pull him up, and right as it's about to come down, the make And uh, we lost Jim. Yeah, he cut Jim out is tip. broken. Jim is broken. Hello. No, you're not broken. Anyway, so right as uh, soon as I get stabbed, the Megazord blocks Zed's staff with its sword, and the Megazord starts fighting Lord Zed. 
But then Alpha's also still too, so Alpha punches Lord Zed in the back, and the uh, Megazord manages to grab the command center from around his neck and gives it to Alpha to keep safe. Zed and the Megazord then have a big old monster fight. <coughs> and they make the point that Lord Zed is actually much weaker than he thinks right now because, um, you know, he punches the Megazord in the face and the Rangers, it's a red bubble, so I'm assuming it's Jason taunting him. But was that supposed to hurt? Takes some adjustment, doesn't it? Suddenly having limbs that weigh more than buildings. Maybe if you had some time to get used to it, this would be a fair fight. But you don't have time and you're not ready for us. The thing about being a giant Zed is there's nowhere to hide. You came for our planet. You missed. But uh, Zed grabs the staff and manages to blast them away with magic. And uh, Wonder Woman reports that he's on the ground, uh, shrinking himself, and he's running away. Uh, Wonder Woman's like, I've got him. And Kimberly replies, no. Teleports herself out of the Megazord in midair. Goes, allow me. <laughs> Boxing glove arrow. <laughs> yeah. Right in the face. I would also argue that's not entirely accurate because if Lord Zed has always had the ability to make himself grow, for as old as Lord Zed is, don't you think he's done that once or twice already? You would think. So Zed well, takes a plot so Zed, Zed takes a boxing glove arrow to the face. Kimberly remarks that that was pretty much the most satisfying <clears throat> thing ever. Well, tell Lolly you said that. Yeah. And so the uh, the Megazord grabs Brainiac's ship and basically uses it like a to re-enlarge Angel Grove. They manage to get it aligned. They re-enlarge it and fix the city. It's all good. And the command center. And the command center, yep. They all celebrate in the juice bar with the Justice League and their civilian identities. Uh, there, there's, a, there's a joke about Batman being able to do a really good impression of a human being when he's not wearing the cowl. <laughs> and Tachi is emotionless. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, Alpha. And there's a yeah. joke. And there's a joke where Bruce reaches into his jacket and he's about to pay the bill for everybody. And Zach stops him and says, "You can't pay the bill here." And uh, you know, and they're all like, "Well, he's a billionaire. He really can." And he's like, "No, it's not that." It's because, um, you know, you got the you got the, you, know, you got the hundred dollar bill there, but in our world, Lex Luthor was never the president. <laughs> <coughs> so they restore everything. The league agrees to go back home. They allow Kimberly. They let Kimberly keep the boxing glove arrow. Uh, Billy gives Cyborg a communicator so they can call on them interdimensionally for help should the need arise. They bid adieu. The Justice League uh, gets back in the plane. Green Lantern tows the Brainiac ship behind them, and they head back. And they head back through the uh, back through the portals. They can head home. Now oh, you're playing with portals. Playing with portals. Mm -hmm. And at the very end, you know, you know, you know by Justice League. And uh, at the very end, Alpha Alpha simply remarks, "I, yai 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 am Brainiac." Oh man! And thus end Alpha under Brainiac control. Presumably, the indication being that they left that open should they want to do a follow-up crossover. So. Oh man! Yep. So thus, that's Justice League Power Rangers. I wouldn't mind seeing a continuation of that if they work with Boom Studios on it. That'd be fucking amazing. Yeah. What well, is Boom Studios? Oh, is it? Yeah. See, yeah. I don't, don't see how they got like such the continuity wrong with Power Rangers. It's fucking Boom Studios. Yeah. But it's an else world. Um. But anyway, yeah, this is a really great comic. Uh, I encourage people to go out and pick this up. It is really enjoyable. Um. I may I spoil the plot for you a little bit, yes. I, I do apologize for that, but it is still worth reading yourself just to see all the great jokes and, and bits that are in here. Definitely check and the it artwork. out. And the artwork, of course, is beautiful, definitely worth seeing. So give that a shot. Um Yeah, definitely go pick it up. Like I said, available in trade hardback and uh, on digital platforms. It's on Comixology and others. You can pick it up. 
it's definitely worth going to uh, give a look. If you like the Justice League and the Power Rangers, just try not to take it too seriously through for either continuity because in order to make this they sort of thing work, out. there there is a there are yeah, there's some sacrifices on both sides. Um, you know, the league's powers, whether they're at appropriate levels or not, <clears throat> the Rangers, whether they fit into continuity or not. There's certainly a lot of issues with this. But in the end, I think it is a very enjoyable story if you're willing to not take just it too seriously and just enjoy it for what it is. And that is just a, a fun little crossover between two universes that wouldn't normally go together. It sounds like it was pretty good. It sounds like the story, despite all its flaws, was actually a pretty good story. It was a good concept for a story. There's just the question of, you know, shouldn't the League have been able to resolve this faster if they were really using their full powers? You know... Shouldn't they be more powerful than the Rangers inherently? Shouldn't, uh, you know, shouldn't, how does this fit exactly into the Rangers continuity? And uh, my arg my counter argument to that is have you people who are complaining about this ever read or seen anything where the Justice League fights Brainiac? Is any of that resolved quickly? I don't think so. It's fucking Brainiac. Yeah, but they fought him before. They, they always beat him, they know how to deal with him. And they beat and him here. They beat him here, but it's just a matter of, um, you know, and, and all, it's also the fact that when the two teams are fighting each other near the beginning, the Justice League probably should have had, it should have been nearly as difficult to take them all. Like, because of how god modded they tend to be in the comics, theoretically, Batman should have beaten the entire Ranger team single handedly. <laughs> Beat Batman. Yeah. But. No. People who don't understand Batman say that. People who understand Batman is the reason why the big meme exists, and the meme exists for a reason, and it's the reason why Batman could not have beat the Power Rangers right out of the gate. Okay. Batman is only good when he has time to plan. Mm. He couldn't plan for the Power Rangers because he didn't know they existed. He went straight into a fight with beings he didn't know what powers they had, and being Power Rangers, Batman is clearly outclassed and got his ass whooped. Well, that, that depends, because it's also never truly been established. Exa that, and that's the other question, is exactly how much does being a Power Ranger enhance your strength speed or whatever? Because in continuity of the Ranger, they've never really established exactly what level that is. Enough to fight monsters, obviously, but we've never established exactly what that difference is. Even if it doesn't enhance their like strength and abilities that much, their suit is still protected enough by the morphing grid that anything Batman would try to do to them would just bounce off the morphing grid shield. Hence the sparks. Well, that's the question because I feel because I feel like Batman's tech would have detected the grid, analyzed it, and he would have fired off some kind of an EMP that would have shorted out their grid connection. But you're assuming an EMP would work against the morphing grid. Well, I don't know. I feel like that would have analyzed it in such a way that it would work with those frequencies. But in either it, case, he had enough time. Anyway, the fact of the simple fact of the matter is there's certainly complaints to be had for both sides of this. It's not perfect, but it is still no. an enjoyable comic, particularly if you're willing to overlook a little bit from each for the sake of enjoying them together if you're a fan of both. Absolutely. So definitely yeah. go check this out wherever comics are available. Uh, I think it's worth a while. Something to show you guys really quick before we sign off. <sighs> Quickly. Check that out. Uh, it's a black screen. It's not actually showing it. No. It's not actually showing it. God damn it. It says I'm screen sharing. Hang on. All right, I'll, sh I'll screen share. On the, uh, off. Um, why is it not turning off? There we go. Now it's turned off. Okay, so let me do this. I'll put it on here and it'll work. Yoink. Okay. Yoinks and away. Absolutely. <laughs> Yoinks and away. Yoinks and away. So exactly. All edge. Yeah. Okay. So that means what I want. To Come on, Jeff. Select this. Ah. Check that out. Oh, there we go. So thanks to Arkham Natic for making that. I don't know if he created that Green Ranger or if it's another one he found that was in the mold of the movie. So it's, but tell me that doesn't look badass. Although you'll notice there's two characters missing from this lineup. That does look badass. Blue. And. 
Billy and his counterpart. Cyborg. Yep. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why he's not there, but for whatever reason, they didn't include him. But I still think that looks bad. And I, I think that version of Tommy looks awesome with the, the chest shields up. I think that looks cool. It does look pretty cool. But tell me you wouldn't go see that movie. It'd be interesting, at the least. Yeah. If somebody doesn't look like those two worlds would kind of go together, just with the aesthetic. Yeah, they're certainly both dark and gritty enough. Womp, womp, womp. Is Tommy holding... Can't tell. No, he's not holding it. Okay, I thought he might be holding the dagger, but he's not. Nope. But yeah, I found that when I was looking for the, the image of uh, the Asriel sword. And I was like, oh, that looks kind of cool. Yeah, anyway... So, with that, as we said, Whoa. go check this out. It's available. It's a it's a great little comic story. It's fun to read and see the interactions between all these characters. Yes, and uh, <clears throat> we hope you'll enjoy it. Yeah, thank you too for joining me. Absolutely, it was fun. Uh, yep, it was. I'm James Phoenix. Have a good night, everybody. Have a happy fourth. Indeed. Adios.